You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ, Darren, and Pedro. South Korea hack attack, EOS token sale all year, Switzerland is fintech friendly, all this and more in episode 213 here on Wednesday, July 5th, 2017. In the traditional markets, we have gold down to $1,227, silver's down to $16.07, oil is up to $45.62. Dow is also up to 21,478 points, and the 30-year Treasury yield is slightly down to 2.84%. In the crypto markets, Bitcoin is up to $2,607. Litecoin is up to $52.50. Ethereum is down to $269. And Dash is up over $200 again at $210. Wow. Just a reminder, you can tune in to Neocash Radio every Wednesday night. Don't want to miss a single moment of our awesome Neocash content, including special episodes and bonus interviews. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, and more. Well, getting right into it, there's a lot to talk about this week as usual, and we're going to start out in South Korea. Pedro. Yeah, South Korean lawmakers will be presenting several bills that will affect the legal status of cryptocurrencies. The legislation is intended to fill the, quote, void of of a state-led protection that guarantees digital currencies value, unquote, and eradicate the possibility of wrecking havoc on national economy from digital currency bubble burst, another quote. One bill aims to revise the Electronic Financial Transactions Act. If approved, the bill will require traders, brokers, and other businesses involved in cryptocurrency transactions to get regulatory approval from the Financial Services Commission, maintain a da- maintaining uh, data processing facilities and having at least 500 million won, or about half a million dollars in capital. Uh, tax laws will also be revisited to allow Korean financial authorities to pursue tax evaders who do not pay income or corporate tax from digital currency transactions. Well, I mean... Yeah, so we can kind of see this coming with... uh, I mean, there was an explosion of interest in crypto in South Korea this past uh, six months. So uh, not a surprise that there's a lot of attention. And there's also stuff going on with South Korean uh, exchanges. That's right. The uh, South Korean exchange Bitum, uh, I think it's bit... It looks like by thumb was hacked. Uh, one of the largest exchanges in the world suffered a hack last week. And this time, the thieves gained access to a personal computer rather than the exchange servers. The attackers made off with personal data of roughly 31,800 uh, 31, site users, or about 3% of the total users. Following the hack, the customers were reporting missing Bitcoin and South Korean Wong. The data that was stolen did not include passwords, but enough information for hackers to somehow reset or find the account passwords. Once again, here at New Cash Radio, we would like to remind you that if you don't hold the private keys, you don't have the coin. Leaving your treasure on an exchange is inherently risky. Attacks on exchanges are a regular thing. It's recommended that as soon as you're done trading, you move the funds to a wallet you control, preferably a hardware wallet. So, uh, you know, Plus and minus from Korea right now. They are definitely leading the Dash charge right now. As far as the market is concerned, they are beating out Polonix. So, uh, Polonix. All right. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's good news from Korea. And, you know, obviously the thing is, is a lot of these people that have just gotten into the trading. They, it, they're, they're treating it, you know, like uh, so many of the other sites that have chargebacks, you know, and have like, you know, the PayPal and, and such. So these individuals... Why are they leaving so much money sitting on the exchange? This is just—it's a problem. It's—it's it's asking for problems almost. Um, but yeah, yeah, we can't—we can't stress it enough. You, if you don't control the private keys to your wallet, then you don't control the coin. That's right. So, moving on, we have a, a update here on the Monaco token reissuance. After completing their token generation event on June nineteenth, the Monaco team discovered a flaw in the token contract. They have since reissued the tokens. So this is just a reminder to check that you have the correct token contract in uh, your wallets. Because some of the, uh, like my Ether wallet is this automatically, but some of the wallets you actually have to put in your token contract, like the Ethereum standard wallet, for example. I think this kind of is a reflection on the token space, not necessarily the space as a whole. But at least in this situation, they were very quick to market, and they didn't even check their code, or they didn't check it thoroughly enough. Well, they, they were advertising a lot all over the place. They, I don't know how much money they spent on advertising, but they didn't actually generate, they didn't reach their soft cap. Okay. 
Uh, I believe it was around 71,000 Ether that they collected. Yeah, I saw some of the ads, too, and um, I think it's so weird to see ads for this cryptocurrency. Of course, it's probably targeted Google ads or whatever, right. but, uh, but it's it's just crazy. Well, it's the ICO hype, and getting into it, the EOS hype or hero. The EOS is an idea with a lot of big names behind it, but little else to show. The plan is to create a new blockchain that will compete with Ethereum for the decentralized application market leader. To make that happen, they need money, and a lot of it. The token generation event is going on now and will happen for nearly a year. One billion EUS tokens will be distributed with plans for the blockchain to be live in September of this year. 20% of the total has already been distributed, and the trading has started on exchanges already. The ideas and technology described by their website and white paper are fascinating. Once the blockchain is live, it is assumed that the Ethereum tokens will be transferred to credited to accounts on the new EUS blockchain. It bears mentioning that an open-ended token generation event for a product that is yet to be created raises a couple red flags. And this is basically, uh, it's, it's like the perfect cash-in on the ICO hype because not only do you have people buying tokens right now, but they're already selling them for a premium on, on Bitfinex and other locations. And it's the, the, uh, so the, the actual sale is going on in, in a bunch of uh, small... Uh, amounts, but they it amounts to 341 days of a token sale for something that they don't have anything for. Now, now, mind you, we were critical of Ethereum. Darren and I were critical of yes. Ethereum when they did their token sale because, once again, they didn't have much to to offer as yeah. far as this is what we can do and this is what works and this is the code that's, that's operating. But the, it, it bears mentioning again that, I mean, the open-ended... Open an idea of this ICO when, when you don't have anything to show for it, it just screams money grab. Now, one of the people behind this is Dan Larimer from BitShares and Steemit fame and a bunch of other big names. And their their white paper is is a bunch of hype. It's a bunch of great, great uh, technology terms and all this sort of stuff. But once again, what do you have to show? So I'm just I'm putting a warning out there. That's not to say EOS won't be successful. And it's not to say that, that EOS won't, won't actually happen, as they say. This is just sort of like, and you know, try, with all the ICO craziness going on right now, I think a little bit of caution and skepticism is very, very healthy. It's always healthy, and it's especially healthy now with this. I mean, I, I think there's some great projects out there. But, uh, you know, there do seem to be some that are very thin and do, uh, do appear to be a money grab. Now, one other thing about this is that in the, in the, the, the crypto space is full of a lot of emotions with the volatility of the marketplace being what it is. And so as you go to some of these forums and locations where people are sharing ideas and thoughts, they, uh, the idea came out that, that this is the, the Ethereum killer, if you will. Okay, so this this idea that they are competing in a smart contract space with, with basically Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Waves, Lisk, and maybe a couple other uh, Ethereum offshoots. But to think that they're like the fact that people are even suggesting that this is the Ethereum killer is just just asinine as far as I'm concerned. Because Ethereum, not only do they have such a head start and all this brain power and all the funding already, but they they you know they're, they're years ahead. And they've, they've worked through a lot of really difficult problems. It's not to say that EOS won't profit from what Ethereum learned, but to, to, to come out and suggest that this company is going to come out of nowhere and destroy Ethereum or, or, or take over is just really, really, really ludicrous. Yeah, I mean, this is how crazy the, the ICOs are. Useless Ethereum tokens, so uetoken.com, uh, this site tells you that this token is useless. There's no use for it. Uh, you can contribute as much as much as you want, but this token has no value, and and you know isn't going to do anything. And almost fifty four ether has been contributed to it, so almost <laughs> fifteen thousand dollars. And I don't know if this is. I have no reason why people you know would send money here, other than if they just looked at the at the top of the screen, it says the world's first one hundred percent honest Ethereum ICO. And if that's all they read and gave money, then it kind of shows how crazy this well, is. Well, I, I, I honestly, obviously, this looks like a joke, and, it, you know, everything about this is a joke, and it's sort of a thumb-in-cheek uh, commentary about the current ICO space. The fact that they have gotten some money from this. $15,000, JJ, you know, almost. Good for them. Good for them. They have, they have earned that money through creating this website and providing an address. 
and Pro- providing maybe, entertainment. And why didn't some oh, smart contract? Why didn't we think of this? Well, you know, we're thinking about a lot of different things for Neocash Radio, and there are a couple ideas that I don't quite want to mention just yet. But we have another, another. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, another article from you, Pedro. Yeah. So, um, good news in, from Switzerland uh, today, starting from first uh, of August, 2017, Switzerland would put its new regulations regarding regarding fintech companies into force. Companies will be able to operate in a sandbox environment without the need to re- registrate with the regulatory authority. Furthermore, this sandbox will not be limited to a specific duration, but will be unrestricted in its length. So good for Switzerland. Wow. That's like just... just uh, Creating a magnet for uh, blockchain projects. I mean, it's open. Projects. It's yeah. just an open door. Absolutely. And that's, uh, by the way, uh, Switzerland is where the uh, Ethereum Foundation is founded. That's right, in the uh, Crypto Valley of Zug, Switzerland. So, uh, more to talk about. Darren, we've got an email from our friend Herschel at Shire Soaps talking about their Porkfest vendor experience. Oh, yeah, I remember. I, I bought soap with, from him at yeah, Porkfest. You did? Yeah, we used it in the shower to stay clean. Nice. Well, it's, soap is really good. Shire Soaps makes all natural soap, lip balm, body butters, and more. These are typically like $5 or less items, and last year they collected only Bitcoin. But this year, they were accepting 15 different altcoins and silver. Herschel reports that eight different altcoins were used to buy his products this year. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dash, Ether, Ether Classic, Dogecoin, Monero, and Zerocoin. So this is, I mean, as, as a, a data point, Porkfest has, has been an early adopter of crypto for vendors and, right. and various things. Yeah, I went around there. I didn't see too much about Dash's acceptance. I saw a pizza vendor with a Bitcoin QR code, and uh, I thought that was a little bit weird because of the fees. If you're right. accepting eleven dollars, you've got to pay like fifty cents just for that for spending that uh, that transaction on top of the other ones you get in there. So. Um, yeah. So uh, anyway, so that we there was a I would say the uh, crypto at Porkfest was a little bit muted this year, but yes, uh, I did. I think I bought two or three things with Dash. Nice. And uh, that was my exclusive crypto that this time. Nice. And, uh, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So um, also, um, I have some news on the Dash front, JJ. Excellent. What's going on? So uh, the, the uh, roadmap. We talked a little bit about that last time. And I, I wanted to revisit that some, but uh, there th- there is uh, new news that's coming out. Uh, if you just go on the GitHub repository, you can see the uh, Dash Pay GitHub repository. You can see that there's a new repository that is uh, called Dips. Okay. Dips. Dips. And uh, this is a uh, repository uh, for future improvement plans similar to the Bitcoin improvement plans, <laughs> which were Bips. Yeah. So, uh, and so it's it's really interesting to see this development. I I, I think this kind of signals Dash growing up. Okay, it, it's actually being its own own entity. Uh, the code is going to diverge so much from Bitcoin that we won't be able to port it over anymore, or something like that. It's gonna. It's. I mean, there's some things we can still port, but uh, but um, the, the Dash's direction is going and starting to basically break away. From its parent, okay. From from Bitcoin, so so this is uh, exciting to me. And JJ, I do believe I'll have a even more detailed update next week. Excellent, Darren. But yes, yes, yes. And um, also, there was an interesting thing in the roadmap, um, and I, I actually think this is a pretty good idea. There's a uh, in the roadmap. I guess it's it's for version two point one point two. But see, now they're like zero point whatever. Uh, 1.12 or something. But um, so it, this would be way down the road. Okay. But uh, it, it, they're going to introduce what they call masternode blocks. Okay. And uh, so w- the idea would be that there would actually be two blockchains that are co- running Dash. All right. Or da- that Dash kind of runs on. One blockchain would handle all the transactions. That's the one you're used to. But the uh, masternode blocks would, would be a new chain. That would uh, handle some of the like governance uh, types questions and some other information that's not necessarily a hundred percent tied to uh, the the blockchain the the um, the the payment blockchain. So right. uh, I think this is a this is this is 
Uh, I was kind of glad to see this. Uh, it, it was, I mean, I'm working for him, but this, this came up without me knowing about it. Um, but it's actually kind of a good thing because with the governance issue, they're using what they don't have a blockchain, right? And the whole thing behind what Satoshi did is it he made this blockchain, and that allows a lot of computers to agree on what the the state of the system is, right? Right. And and the first application was Bitcoin with a ledger, state of a ledger, and uh, this was actually a hard problem that uh, Satoshi solved. So. Um, if you try to solve the same problem, but you don't have a blockchain, it's, it's kind of hard. That's one reason it took so long to solve. So uh, bringing up a new blockchain to make certain that you're sure of uh, that you're sure everybody agrees on on other information other than transactions that 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 makes a lot of sense to me. Well, it seems like that will take some of the load away from the transaction blockchain and put some of the extra features and functions into this masternode blockchain. Right. So that's, I mean, that's smart. If you want to use these features and functions, then, you know, cool, that's over here. That's the line for that is over here. If you're just going to do a transaction, the line for that is over here. Right. So I did the first dual blockchain blockchain technology. Yeah, well, it's, it's just in the uh, uh, thinking through stages right now. But, sure. Uh, but uh, it is in the roadmap, so uh, you can go see that on yourself. I, um, let's see. It's, it's, well, the one that just came out, the, the roadmap. Okay. So it's on, it's on the Dashpay GitHub. Awesome. Well, collaborating with Neocache, Darren, we've also received an email from someone who wants to collaborate with us to produce episodes for Neocache Radio. I wanted to spend a moment to talk about the opportunities available. I'm very much interested in branching out internationally and experimenting with podcasters as collaborators. Ultimately, I would like to see successful contributors become full-fledged correspondents. Many places, cultures, and languages can only help us reach a larger audience. Darren, I have created a pissy, hype-free news analysis and opinion show with a family-friendly tone. If you're interested in working with us to help to build the Neocache network, then send me an email at jj at Neocache Radio. And if you have questions for Darren about Dash and things like that, you can always email da- Darren at... Darren at NeocacheRadio.com. That's right. So um, also, in an ongoing effort to always improve the show, we are uh, looking for educational block- blockchain video recommendations. So as the crypto market eats up, people have been approaching us about where they can get better educated. We would like to find videos and guides out there that have a technical and non-technical guide to various aspects of blockchain and crypto... I want to tap into our viewers for suggestions. Many of our listeners are also now being asked by their friends and family about crypto, and we want to know the material you might use to educate others. So please email suggestions once again to JJ at Neocash Radio. Topics to cover include, but are not limited to, one, the fundamentals of blockchain technology, the overview of Bitcoin, overview of Ethereum and smart contracts, overview of Dash, each topic uh, both high level as well as a more technical deep dive. So, and in our first suggestion video, <laughs> Darren, it's Darren's uh, deep dive video of the math behind Bitcoin. Yes, so. so you Google math behind Bitcoin, and I think it's the second one that comes up. And Darren, talk, yeah. you talk about the elliptical? Yeah, talk about the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm, which is how Bitcoin checks when you spent Bitcoin that it was really you that spent it. And I also talk a little bit about the mining algorithm, about how the hashing works and all that. Now, I don't talk about how hash functions work, but I talk about uh, how blocks are determined and, and how they make a chain and how, uh, and how there is one specific chain that's considered the best. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Well, that's, uh, there, there's so much more going on, and, and we, we, you know, this, show, this show here is, is going to be a, a pretty short one. So we, yeah, it's a it's a well. Anyway, we started with a half an hour, but there's been so much news lately coming out. Yeah, and, and that, there's going to be a lot of news coming up in, in the next couple of months. Yeah, so we we've, we've gone a little bit over recently, and uh, so the, yeah. The, but uh, we used to we try to cover uh, traditional markets, JJ. Yeah, and we don't cover traditional markets so much anymore. That's not to say we won't. Right, but uh, we could you know we could spend half a show just talking about what central banks are doing sometimes. So right. I mean, it, it, you know, really what we want is feedback. Aren't from those listeners. going away? Do you want more legacy market and traditional market coverage? Or would you rather us spend more time on uh, the crypto markets or ICOs or Ethereum or any specific interest? Whatever your interests are, email us. Our emails will be on the blog at neocashradio.com. That's right. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us here at Neocash Radio. This is JJ. Darren. 
And Pedro. For Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. Tune in every Wednesday and more with more bonus episodes and special content on the way. NeoCashRadio.com. Radio.com.